हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर चैनल फार्मा जीएलपी इन आवर प्रीवियस टू वीडियो सेगमेंट्स पार्ट वन एंड पार्ट टू ऑन सेबिलिटी स्टडीज अकॉर्डिंग टू द आई सी एच क्यू वन आर टू गाइडलाइन वी टच अपॉन वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ स्टेबिलिटी स्टडीज लाइक डिफाइनिंग ऑफ स्टेबिलिटी स्टडी एक्सप्लेनिंग द रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ स्टेबिलिटी स्टडीज द प्रोसीजरल फ्रेमवर्क फॉर स्टेबिलिटी स्टडी एड्रेसिंग कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ क्लाइमेटिक जोन्स क्लैरिफाइंग टेस्टिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड स्टोरेज कंडीशन इन जनरल केस If you have missed those videos please do check before continuing with this one i have given link of both videos in the description below also in the i button now in this video we are focusing on specification for stability study followed by different storage conditions based on various cases along with their testing frequencies then concept of significant changes in stability study and stability commitments so stay tuned and watch this video till the end and before moving ahead please don't forget to hit like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you will not miss any of our upcoming videos now let's start our today's topic with specification for drug substance and products stability studies play a critical role in ensuring the integrity and effectiveness of drug substance and drug product over a time so the stability study should cover all aspects which are susceptible to change such as physical change chemical change or microbiological changes during storage or transportation and which can affect the quality safety and efficacy of drug substance and drug product the specification is the list of test and proposed acceptance criteria the fixing of specification is elaborated in icsh guideline q6a and q6b the limits for degradation impurities is discussed in icsh guideline Q3A and Q3B. The analytical procedures used should be fully validated and stability indicating. The different specifications for released and stability study can be used. The test results from primary stability batches should be considered in setting and justifying specification. As covered in our previous video, stability study part two, we explored three different types of stability studies and their respective testing frequencies. Now let's have a brief overview on the types of stability studies and their associated testing frequencies. The stability studies can be defined as the long term stability studies, intermediate stability studies and accelerated stability studies. The long term stability studies shall cover the entire retest period or shelf life under the recommended storage condition. The testing frequencies for long term stability study should be normally every 3 months for the first year that is 0 month 3 month 6 month 9 month and 12 month then every 6 months for the second year that is 18 month and 24 month and then every year till the proposed shelf life that is 36 month 48 month and 60 month then intermediate stability study is designed to moderately increase the rate of chemical degradation or physical changes of drug substance or drug product the intermediate stability study is a 12 month study the testing frequency for intermediate stability study is minimum of four time points including the initial and final time points that is 0 month 6 month 9 month and 12 month and the last is accelerated stability study is designed to increase the rate of chemical degradation or physical change of drug substance or product by using exaggerated or elevated storage conditions accelerated stability study is a 6 month stability study the testing frequency for accelerated stability study is minimum of 3 time points including the initial and final time points that is 0 month 3 month and 6 months the purpose of accelerated stability study is to prove the stability of drug product or drug substance especially when short term excursions or deviations occurs beyond the label storage conditions due to stability chamber issue or during transportation or shipment events now let's discuss what is meant by significant change observed in stability study for drug substance and drug products first we will discuss significant change in case of drug substances any change or failure to meet its specification limit is called as a significant change Now we'll discuss significant change in case of drug products. First criteria is a 5% change in assay from its initial value or 
failure to meet the acceptance criteria for assay or potency by using biological or immunological procedures. Second criteria is any impurity or degradation products exceeding its specification criteria. Third one is failure to meet the acceptance criteria for appearance, physical changes or functionality test. Then fourth criteria is failure to meet the acceptance criteria for pH. And fifth one is failure to meet the acceptance criteria for dissolution for 12 dosage units. All these criteria are considered as a significant change for drug products. If long term studies are conducted at 25 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and a relative humidity of 60% Rh plus minus 5% Rh and if significant change occurs at any time point during 6 month stability testing at accelerated storage condition then a thorough investigation of significant changes shall be done. Subsequently, additional testing at the intermediate storage condition should be initiated and the results of this testing should then be evaluated based on the criteria for determining significant change. The initial application should include a minimum of 6 months data from a 12 month study at the intermediate storage condition. When there is no significant change at accelerated stability study, then the retest period or shelf life would depend upon the nature of the long term stability data and the accelerated stability data. Extrapolation of the retest period or shelf life beyond the period covered by long term data can be proposed. The proposed retest period or shelf life can be up to twice but should not be more than 12 months beyond the period covered by long term data. Now let's explore types of storage conditions and how different storage conditions are chosen based on specific cases. Depending on the nature of the products, its internet use and other factors, different storage conditions are recommended. Different climatic zones or regions have varying climatic conditions which affect product stability. So storage conditions are adjusted to match these zones ensuring the product remains effective regardless of where it is distributed. Some products are more sensitive to temperature or humidity variations. For this, the storage conditions are selected to provide the most accurate representation of real world scenarios. The importance of selecting the right storage condition in stability studies is crucial for maintaining product quality and safety. Different scenarios require different conditions whether long term, intermediate, accelerated or specific storage condition. Long term storage conditions For many products, long term storage conditions are used. These may make room temperature typically at 25 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and a relative humidity of 60% Rh plus minus 5% Rh. This condition represents a controlled environment in which the product might expose during distribution and storage. The intermediate stability study is conducted only in cases where a significant change observed during accelerated stability testing. Accelerated condition In cases where we want to access the long term stability of a product in a shorter time frame, accelerated conditions come into play. These are more extreme conditions like higher temperature and humidity that accelerate the degradation process. This help us to predict how the product might behave over a longer period. Specific conditions. Certain product might require unique conditions. For example, if a drug substance or drug product is recommended to store at refrigerated storage condition or deep freezer condition, then the stability studies under those specific temperature ranges should be conducted. In our previous video, we covered the storage conditions that apply in general case. So in general case, long term stability studies are conducted at 25 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity 60% Rh plus minus 5% Rh or 30 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 65% Rh plus minus 5% Rh. The intermediate stability studies are conducted at 30 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 65% Rh plus minus 5% Rh. 
and the accelerated stability studies are conducted at 40 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 75% RH plus minus 5% RH. In specific cases, particularly when considering zone 4 conditions that is hot and humid or hot and very humid, the long term stability studies are generally conducted at 30 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 65% RH plus minus 5% RH or 30 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 75% RH plus minus 5% RH condition. In such scenarios, there is no requirement for an intermediate stability study. Hence, the asterisk mark is given for it is up to the applicant to decide whether the long term stability studies are performed at 25 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 60% RH plus minus 5% RH or 30 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 65% RH plus minus 5% RH. The double asterisk mark is given for if 30 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 65% RH plus minus 5% RH is a long term condition then there is no intermediate condition. Specific conditions where a drug substance or drug product is recommended to store at refrigerated storage condition. In those cases, the long term stability studies are conducted at 5 degree plus minus 3 degree that is 2 to 8 degree temperature and the accelerated stability studies are conducted at 25 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 60% RH plus minus 5% RH. If significant change occurs between 3 and 6 months testing at accelerated storage condition, the proposed shelf life should be based on the real time data available from the long term storage condition. If a significant change is noticed within the first 1 to 3 months of conducting a stability study at the accelerated storage condition, then it is necessary to provide the justification to address the impact of short term excursion outside the labeled storage condition during transportation or shipment and handling of drug product. The justification can be provided by conducting additional testing on a single batch which has a stability period of less than 3 months but with a frequent testing intervals. These studies can provide rationale for temporary deviation or short term excursions outside the labeled storage condition. It is considered unnecessary to continue to test a product through 6 months when a significant change has occurred within the first 3 months. When a drug substance or drug product are recommended to store at a deep freezer condition, in those cases the long term stability studies are conducted at a temperature of minus 20 degree plus minus 5 degree centigrade. In this condition an accelerated storage study is not required, however it is essential to perform testing on a single batch at an elevated temperature either at 5 degree plus minus 3 degree temperature that is 2 to 8 degree temperature or 25 degree plus minus 2 degree centigrade. This testing should be carried out for an appropriate duration to access the impact of short term excursions outside the level storage condition such as those occurring during shipping or handling. The drug products which are supposed to be marketed in a semi-permeable containers, for example, ophthalmic solutions, it should be demonstrated that aqueous based drug products stored in a semi-permeable containers can withstand low relative humidity environments. So, the aqueous based products packaged in a semi-permeable containers should be additionally evaluated for potential water loss. This evaluation can be carried out under conditions of low relative humidity. In these cases, the long term stability studies are conducted at 25 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 40% RH plus minus 5% RH or 30 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 35% RH plus minus 5% RH. The intermediate storage conditions should be performed at 30 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 65% RH plus minus 5% RH and the accelerated studies are conducted at 40 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity not more than 25% RH. The asterisk mark is given it is up to the applicant to decide 
whether the long term stability studies are performed at 25 degree plus minus 2 degree centigrade temperature and relative humidity of 40% rh plus minus 5% rh or 30 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 35% rh plus minus 5% rh and the double asterisk mark is given if 30 degree plus minus 2 degree temperature and relative humidity of 35% rh plus minus 5% rh is a long term condition then there is no intermediate condition in this case submission of data from a 6 month accelerated stability study 6 months intermediate stability study data if in case significant change occurs other than water loss during 6 months at the accelerated storage conditions and 12 month long term stability data shall be submitted at the time of product registration now let's discuss stability commitment for drug substances and drug product in case where the submission include long term stability data on three production batches covering the proposed retest period for drug substances or shelf life for drug product a post approval commitment is not required if in case the submission includes the data from stability studies on at least three production batches a commitment should be made to continue the long term studies through the proposed retest period for drug substances or shelf life for drug product and the accelerated studies for 6 months in case if the data submission does not include stability data on production batches a commitment should be made to place the first three production batches on long term stability studies through the proposed retest period for drug substances or shelf life for drug products and on accelerated stability studies for 6 months in case if less than three production batches kept for stability study a commitment should be made that the additional production batches will be kept for stability study on long term stability studies through the proposed retest period for drug substances or shelf life for drug products and on accelerated stability studies for 6 months and if the submitted data is not sufficient to cover the entire retest period for drug substance or shelf life for drug product then the commitment should be made that the long term stability study will continued after submission till the proposed retest period for drug substance or shelf life for drug product and the accelerated studies for 6 months that's all for today's video hope this is useful thank you for watching and see you in the next video